or when you love yourself or when you feed yourself wonderful, wholesome food and laugh. When you laugh, you move those humors of the body. There's a vibration that happens when you're laughing that begins to pump out toxic material. You see, all of your thoughts are contained in your cellular structure. Okay? Right, right. Your cells are holding on to your thoughts. That's your memory. Right. Now, if your cells are made of toxic material, sludge, slime, mucus, chemicals, then guess what? You're holding on to the worst of your thoughts. You don't hold on to the best of your thoughts because the best of your thoughts are kind of light. You see, the, 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 the disagreeable thoughts are dense and heavy. Then there's these things called dendrites. Dendrites are like little trees, and they pick up the information from the cell and send it to your nervous system. Your dendrites or these little fingers or these little trees hold on to the cell, and the more dendrites, the more trees, the more branches that you have connected to the cell, the more firm the memory is. Now, I want you to listen to this. When you cry, if you measure your tears, you'll find out that they have dendrites in them. These are broken off little trees. When you cry about a subject, let's say you've got some terrible memory, mm -hmm. and you just cry and cry, just let it all out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are breaking off the dendrites, and the memory begins to be pushed back further and further in the file cabinet of your mind. Right. But in America, they don't want you to cry. So don't cry. It's okay. Please, just don't cry. It's all right. They try to dry the tears up and go get you tissues, and they rub you down. No, let the person cry. Right. Cry. Go for it. Let it all out. You see, the thing about emotions, <laughs> excuse me, energy in motion tends to stay in motion until acted upon by an equal or opposite force. That's kind of a piece of what we've heard, and I've twisted it a little bit. But think about it. Energy, emotions. Emotions are energies in motion. The thing about emotion is it's got to keep moving. You've got to let it out. You've got to let it go. You've got to sometimes just scream and holler and fall out like a child. Look at little children. They scream, holler, fall out in the ground, and it may. 10, 15 minutes later, they're up playing again. What we do is we hold on to the thing. We keep thinking about it. We, we keep pondering on it. We keep rubbing or massaging an old issue. Just in the people, they start telling you their story right away. You know, when I was three years old, blah, 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 blah. And they keep telling this story over and over. You know, a lot of folks come to me for, for you know, to get, to, to get balance, to get their mental balance. Mm -hmm. And I tell them to tell the story. And they, they tell the whole story. And when they're done, I say, are you done? They say, yes. I say, now, don't ever tell that story again. Don't ever tell it again. It's not important. Why are you holding on to the past? When you stop telling the story, when you stop massaging the situation, the dendrites, the little trees that are holding on to this issue, begin to move away. When these trees move away, then you don't have the memory as strong in your mind. So it's harder and harder to get rid of old memories, things that you don't need anymore because of your nutritional factors. That's why they call it a diet. Killing you. I mean, why do you want to diet in your life? You know? People talk about they want to lose weight. Well, people who say they're going to lose weight never do. Why? Because they're trying to lose something, and the subconscious says, the subconscious says, hey, we've lost something. We've got to find it. So what you hey, say is, and, I'm and releasing. The foods that we eat are clouding. They're shrouding. It's like clouds. They create clouds in the body, which is known as mucus and calcification, things like that. Those clouds are shrouding and reflect, reflecting the light so that the light doesn't hit the deep cellular tissue and get down to what's called the chromosome. So the chromosomes are receiving light, but they're not receiving the full spectrum of light based on how we eat, based on how we think and live. We're only here for a certain amount of time. It's a school. But we want to be here and do as much as we can, but most of us have forgotten why we're here because our parents, begin to teach us ways to be not righteous, but leftist. <laughs> they teach us to go against nature because they don't know any better. I mean, we were all brought up during this industrial age 
where it's about college and education and it's about getting ahead and, you know, if you, if you, if you have to step on somebody else's toes to get there, you just do it. You become like crabs in a barrel. Don't let him get up because if he gets up, he'll leave you down. You know, instead of letting somebody get out of the barrel so they can go get help to come back, we become like animals. We become like vultures. We become garbage eaters. We think garbage. The average person today can't tell you what their purpose is. They think that their purpose is to work at this job and, you know, do whatever they're told and go to college and go to church. They figure that's their only message. But every once in a while they get these dreams and these feelings like, wow, I wish I could do this and I wish I could do that. But there's no action. It's just a wish. If you look up wish and follow the etymology of the word wish, you're going to end up at the word won't. If you wish upon something, it's not going to happen. You see? Even the word want, I want to do this, I want to do that. Want, you can hear that N-T on the end, uh, that cuts it off, that stops it, okay? So wanting means it's not going to happen. To want something means to desire without action. That's want. Well, people who have been eating these foods that create these messenger genes to go awry never actually make it to their destination. They can't stay focused. Why? They are light beings. This is why you keep hearing about chromosomes. Chroma means light. Zone means bodies. So your chromosomes are living light creatures. They receive the light from the universe. Now, I'm not just talking about the light from the sun. The light from the universe. And inside your body, your nervous system is illuminated. And the brightest part of your system is called the solar plexus. This is a, a bundle of nerves or fiber optics because nerves are fiber optic cables. You see? I see. They are supposed to send messages to make things happen or things not to happen. They turn off and on, off and on. You see, it's like a digital circuitry. You know, you have zeros and ones, you see. And I these see. messages have to be sent in a certain sequence. Well, the divinity code is the sequence. There's a certain sequence. Sequence, you see, and it fires in threes. It has to be. It's like, it's like a it's like a triune. Three different sources of energy coming together to be one. That's a triune. And when they fire, they come together in threes. This is where you get this, you know, the Holy Trinity thing: the Mother, the Father, and the Son, or the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, it gets kind of weird. But anyway, this concept has to do with the way the divinity code keeps you within the divine source or aligned with the universe. When you use these oils and these fats from crossbred animals, and when you use things like soy oil and canola oil, which is another man-made thing, you know, when you use these oils in your food, and you, you, or I should say in your body, what happens is the divinity code can't fire. The three pieces of yourself can't come together because this greasy, thick, dark oil is shielding the light from your chromosome. When your chromosomes cannot get the correct light, then you become dim. You become dull. You're easily controlled. You're easily made fearful. You can't see truth. You see, you know, it's interesting that, 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 that people... They say the truth is hard. The truth is painful. Well, why is the truth hard and painful? The truth is hard and painful if you're not receiving the correct light. We are light creatures. You see, we're, are, we're made of light. The only thing that is holding us in this particular vibration is our bodies or the bottle of the, what holds the genes. You see, there's a container that's holding your genes, that's holding these creatures together in this community. It's called the, the body or a bottle. When you rub the bottle, that means you're giving it the right amount of light. When the, when the light is emitting, being transponded, then you begin to become what's called a genie. When you give yourself the right energy, when you laugh, when you're in joy, when you're focused, when you're moving towards your, 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 your dreams, when you're living your heart's desires, the genie pops up. Your genes pop up and begin to give you exactly what you desire. If the genes are not getting the right light source, if they're bathed in these animal products, if, they have, if there's too much adrenaline and if there's too much fear, if there's too much pain, too much despair, despair too many thoughts of the past, too much conjuring on the
the future. When you do that too much, you're not in the moment. If you're not in the moment, then you can't get the gift, which is the present. You see? I see. But when you consume these products that are crossbred, man-made, hybridized, you, you know, created making, you know, by mixing different chemicals and formulations, you are out of control. Somebody else is in control. Now somebody controls your time. Whoever controls your time controls your mind. Your glands are computer networks, and your glands send a message to certain organs to create certain things. If you have the wrong fat, the wrong oil in your body, then the message is off. Do you understand what I'm saying? The messenger gene is the one that is attacked to cause people to be zombies, to cause people to be angry, to cause people to love to, to love drama. They, you know, people today, a lot of folks, they need it. They feed on it. They're like vampires. They have to have it because basically what we've been created into is energy vampires. And the easiest way to do this is to get the people to consume lots of blood to be like vampires and to use the oil or the fat of the animal to interrupt our natural hormone so that our messenger gene doesn't send the correct message. So the average person has no idea who they are because each day they're killing the messenger. You're killing your messenger genes by using the wrong oils in your body. In the 1970s, most of the fast food products in America were made using uh, coconut oil because coconut oil is a natural antibiotic. It is antiviral, and it is like a lifeblood of food. It's a superfood, in other words. When we use these particular products like coconut oil and palm oil, we were really healthy. There wasn't as much heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease, cancer, high blood pressure. When we begin to consume these other oils, like canola oil, soy oil, and these other plant oils that uh, are rancid or rotten, then they begin to scar our tissues. They begin to tear or necrotize your blood vessels. Your blood vessels. And then microbacteria and viruses begin to grow inside the blood vessels. The body makes lactic acid to try to put a Band-Aid because it uses lactic acid as a Band-Aid. That's like when you get a cramp. That's lactic acid being wrapped around that muscle to, to, to get you to slow down and, and hold it. Don't move it so it can heal it and give it more oxygen, you see. Lactic acid is, 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 is emitted into your bloodstream to try to heal the scarring from the viruses and the bacteria created by these rancid crossbred oils. I'll get back to the crossbreeding of oils in a minute. Okay. So high blood pressure, heart disease, and all these things shot up like crazy in the 1980s because the soybean companies got together and decided to create this, what I call the fat scam. They created this lie about these tropical oils like coconut oil. They said they were fattening. They said they were artery clogging. They did say they were saturated fats, which they are, but that's not a bad thing. But they, 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 they created this thing with newspapers, and they lobbied, and they lied like crazy because they wanted to get a portion of the market that the coconut, you know, people had, the people who were, who were um, uh, growing coconuts, like the Philippines. Of course, they didn't have a lot of money, so they couldn't fight this. But if you look around Southeast Asia, Africa, India, and the places where they consume lots of coconut and coconut oil, the people are not fat. Very low incidence of heart disease, diabetes, uh, cancer, very low. Why? Because of the coconut oil. Now, these soy oils, first of all, the soy that we consume here in America is not natural. It's a crossbred, hybridized plant, man-made. The man who created it, his name is George Washington Carver, a master agriculturalist, herbalist, and a creator of many, many products. He created soybeans because he was designing plastic. He created plastic. He used a soybean from Asia and crossed it with another plant that grew here indigenously because the original soybean doesn't grow in North America very good. It grows in Asia. You see? Yes, I do. They had to cross it with a plant that grew here naturally. When the, he did that, he created plastic. And interesting enough, uh, Henry Ford went to the Tuskegee Institute and asked if they could use their soybean plastic for cars. So 
even to today, soybean is used to make plastic. Okay? Uh, Mercedes, most of the cars, most of the big cars, the plastic in them is soybean. Now, here's the issue. Plastic creates something called xenoestrogen. That's estrogen-mimicking chemical. Okay? Estrogen by itself in nature is toxic. It's poisonous. You will never see uh, uh, soybean. Uh, you, I'm sorry. You'll never see estrogen by itself. Estrogen is always with a bunch of other hormones that work together synergistically. My point is, is that all we've got to do is cleanse our bodies. There are special ways to cleanse the body, and you begin to remember how to be holistic again, how to think clearly and how to heal your body, and the divinity code pops up, and you become divine. Very simple. In fact, for some people, you can go to my website. Go to www.elevationtime.com. That's www.elevationtime.com. Or you can even give me a call at 323-931-1212. I get it because I go into a special mode when I'm speaking in front of people, and I begin to bring out information that people know is the truth. And you begin to remember, like Humpty Dumpty, that all the king's men and all the king's horses couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together. Only Humpty Dumpty could put himself back together. But he had to have the original true knowledge of self. To be spiritual means to be spiritual. What do you mean, Dr. B? Well, if you were at one place in your life, you had a certain thinking, you had a certain group of friends, you're supposed to expand that circle, and you, you, be, you begin to spiral and make that circle bigger and bigger and larger and larger. You see, a spiral is the only shape that could touch everything. If you were standing in a room right now, and you started in the middle of the room and you began to spiral, slowly you would go out and out and out and touch everything in that room. You have to grow and change and expand and express. This is spirituality. The, the sun is not the center of our place. The solar system, which is a cellular system, it's not a solar system, it's a cellular system. The sun is like the mitochondria energy of the cell. Okay? We do not go around the sun. The earth does not go around the sun. The earth is following the sun. It's spiraling all of the planets, all of the planets, which are feminine in nature, and the sun, which is masculine in nature, they are all following the sun. Well, this brings up another question. Well, since the universe is spiritual in nature, what is the sun following? The sun is following Sirius. Sirius is the mother to the sun. The sun is only a reflector. If you take a picture of the sun, you see it's black. It's a reflector. It's getting its light source from Sirius. Sirius is getting its light, light, light source from Vega. Vega is getting its light source from Lyra. In the beginning, there was the word. In the beginning, there was the sound. In the beginning, there was the lyric. There was Lyra. Lyra is the center. We are all spiraling around Lyra. This is why your word is bond. And what do you mean, Dr. B? Well, you know, people say, well, you know, all I have is my word. Well, this is true. But what are your words? You're bound to your words no matter what. If you tell a lie, you're bound to that lie. Your energy now becomes that lie. All of the creatures within you the mitochondria energy, chromosomes, they all begin to give you what your heart's desire is. And if your heart's desire is to live a lie, then you will live that lie because you're the genie. Your word is bond, okay? If you keep your word, keep your word positive, keep your word creative, say what's actually on your mind, then you become righteous. But when doing a spinning or whirling meditation, should you always spin to the right? No. no. See, your DNA is coiled both ways. There's an expanding spiral, 
and there's a condensing spiral. There's two different spirals going on. So the way I learned is that you start spinning to the right. And if you were going to only spin one way, yes, spin to the right. But some people stop and then spin to the left. You see, you need it all. You need the expansion and compression. You need black and white. You need up and down. You need positive and, you know, a, a negative. You need it all. All of this is part of the system. You see, you want to be balanced. You want to lean towards righteousness, but you can't get rid of some of this other stuff because it's what makes up the substructure of the universe. You need everything. You need two particles. You see, you need two of everything, at least to get things started. And then the three, the two make three. And once you have three, now we can move forward. Dr. B, you hear the music. Please give out that website one more time. www.elevationtime.com. And we will Elevationtime.com. Or you can call 323-931-1212.